assalamu alaikum listeners i hope you all are fine and doing great um i'm here to discuss some concepts regarding marketable securities and investments made by the companies this is chapter number 17 of corporate financial reporting so as i said marketable securities so let's talk about them so marketable securities as their name says that they are marketable marketable means they could be sold almost at the similar prices they are having uh in the books of the companies because their maturities are very near so companies they often purchase the shares of other companies uh, they these shares could be known as marketable securities as i said if their maturities are really near so marketable securities are the securities or the debts that are to be sold or redeemed within a year these are financial instruments that could be easily converted to cash such as government bonds common stocks or the certificates of deposits how does they work if these securities or debts are anticipated to be converted into cash within one year uh, they are uh, listed at their current market value means in the books of the companies they will be recorded at their current market value in the current asset asset section of the balance sheet but if they are non trading means the purpose is for the longer per time period then in that case they are considered as non current investments and they are mentioned in the non current assets so um when the companies they purchase uh, the shares of the other businesses um we have to follow one of the following accounting methods based on how much uh, degree of influence or the control company is having with this investment Uh, it means that if company a has invested in company b so in company a is investor and company b is investee okay so how much investment company a has done in b it defines its degree of influence or control so there are three levels which usually we take in accounting starting with the passive level passive level has uh, usually no influence over the investee because the percentage of investment is very less it could be 2% it could be 5% so usually this percentage is less than the 20% so company a has purchased company b's shares company a has invested in company b but the ownership percentage or this investment percentage is very less rest of uh, the shares are held by some other investors so in this case company a is assumed to exert no influence over the company b um usually uh, the percentage of uh, this influence is less than 20% on the outstanding voting shares of investee so if investee has for example 100% outstanding shares so 5% or 2% which are less than 20% is held by the company a and when we record uh, means when the company a will be recording this investment in its books it will be recorded either based on market method or the cost method we will be discussing these methods in a while the second uh, degree of influence is known as significance influence in case of significance influence company a or you can say investor invest between 20 to 50% um outstanding shares or you can say one company buy uh 20 to 50% shares of the other company so in this case the relation between company a and b will be affiliate or associate relationship so investor is assumed to own enough of the investees uh because 20 and 50% is a huge percentage so in this case we say it's a significance influence uh, of company a over company b and uh, in uh, this one is uh, for this case uh, we follow equity method we do not follow market method or cost method equity method for the accounting is used the third category of uh, influence is known as control and when the investment percentage is more than 50% in the outstanding shares of investee then in that case we say company a controls the company b and in this case we use the consolidation accounting for this purpose company a or you can say com- uh, investor is known as parent and the company b or investee is known as subsidiary so accounting for investee are combined with those of the parent companies and other subsidiaries to 
pro uh, produce the group account so we use consolidated financial statements in this case so let's start uh, with some more uh, details of the types of investments and the marketable securities companies does so investments are shown in several accounts under the assets in the balance sheet so when we invest in the other companies um, these investments uh, could be shown in several accounts first category of accounts are known as cash and cash equivalents Cash and cash equivalents, they are ma mainly the demand deposits and very low risky and they are very high, you can say, liquid financial instruments like short term government bonds. As I said, their maturities are very near, uh, usually less than three months or some weeks are left. The second category of investments are known as short term investments. We call them marketable securities as well. And uh, so it, uh, it contains fixed income securities like government bonds. The third category of uh, investments is known as equity and other investments. And they are in long term assets. Uh, they comprises of long term investments. Uh, these could be in the bonds or the shares or any other type of the stuff but their category is non-current because the purpose is to keep them for the longer period of time investment in subsidiaries you know uh, this one in which you have control over the investee so the investment in subsidiaries are consolidated across all the accounts when the company has investment in subsidiary uh, we make consolidated financial statements and all the accounts are consolidated and therefore the consolidated amounts are reflected in the balance sheet uh, since uh, in the degree of influence, we were talking about three different methods of accounting like market method, cost method, equity method and the consolidation method. So let's see their details now. Starting with uh, the market and the cost method, which is used for the passive investments. Okay. So the market method is used for the passive investment that have an active market with the published prices. Usually these are those investments whose market prices are uh, published every day. So the most common example is shares. Balance sheet amount under this case are reported using the market value as of the balance sheet date. So at the end of every year or you can say whenever company is preparing its balance sheet at that time we will be checking the market value of these shares and we will be recording uh, the, uh, the uh, investments on their market value. And uh, if the market value is different than the book value then in that case income statement is going to be affected. Also invest income statement will be affected if uh, uh, you sell these investments. So at that time whatever proceeds you will be getting from the sales and whatever will be the book value of these investments we will be uh, recording again or the loss because of this difference. So let's suppose the book value of these investments at that time. Uh, let's talk from here. Uh, on the balance sheet date company has updated the balance sheet with uh, some investments the market value for them was 20,000 so now in the balance sheet the market value becomes 20,000 in February for example company is going to sell these investments so balance sheet will be having 20,000 so book value at that time will be 20,000 and for example the proceeds by sale we, what you are getting that is 21,000 so we are collecting more money than what is there in the balance sheet or what is it there in the book value so the difference between them is 1,000 that is realized gain and losses why realized because we are really selling the shares okay so uh, this is what market method says let's talk about the cost method under this method the historical prices are used on the balance sheet so the balance sheet contains the historical prices means at what price you have made this investment usually um, non-marketable equity investments means those in equity investments which are not marketable and the debt securities um, they are uh, going to be reported because full face value of the instruments will be received at the maturity so that's why we follow the cost method and um, 
we uh, do not r record any you know um, uh, updation in the income statement like we have over here that at the end of every year you have to update the balance sheet at that time income statement is affected because of unrealized gain and losses but in this case we do not have income statement effects under this method except for the impairment cases yes impairment if if there is continuous decrease in the market value then we record loss on impairments and the income statement is affected in such cases an impairment loss is recognized and an investment account is written down both the methods cost method or you can say the market method dividend payments are treated in the same way when you know the investee company gives the dividend we record it in the same way uh, what is the way cash gets debit and the dividend payments are recorded as dividend income so cash debit dividend income gets credit uh, if uh, the investments are in bonds so cash debit interest revenue gets credit so interest received is treated as the revenue Under the market method, the difference from the proceeds of the sales and the book value of investment is treated as realized gains. We just discussed it in the previous page. So we have an example over here. Microsoft pays $50 million uh, dollars for shares of another company. So when Microsoft made the investment in another company, they paid $50 million. Microsoft decides to sell these shares for $60 million dollars. So book value is 50 million, the sale is for 60 million, so cash Microsoft receives 60 million. Investment or the book value will get decreased because now that you, you are selling the investment, the book value was 50,000 and the difference is gain on sale. Income statement will be affected because gain on sale is a source of income and it will be mentioned in the income statement. Um, Income statement could also be affected when the company sells on, uh, still owns the shares. Means company is not selling the share, but there is something which happens under the market method and uh, it affects the income statement. As I said over here, this one, that the balance sheet date, we update our balance sheet uh, amount with the market value and at this moment we might have unrealized holding gains and losses so let's have a look at this um, assume shares acquired by Microsoft are publicly traded so now they have an active market value right so we can follow the market value method if the value of the shares on the balance sheet date are dollar sixty million then it will be reported in the balance sheet however how Microsoft decides to treat this unrealized gain of 10 million depends on whether the investment is designated at one of these two types. Let me explain this. Um, for example, instead of selling the shares in this uh, Microsoft, uh, this one which we just did, uh, Microsoft is not selling the shares on the balance sheet date uh, the share book value was 50 million now we have to update it for example at this moment the market value is 60 million so we have to update our balance sheet amount up to the market value right this what market method does so how do we update this uh, we will be debiting our investment account because we have to update the balance value so 10 million dollars will be debited because the difference between 50 and the 60 million is 10 million what should i credit that depends on what is the nature of this investment this investment is available for sale or trading security so if it is available for sale available for sale are marked to market investments they are uh, following the market value method but the intention of the management is to hold them for the dividend income and sometimes for capital gains capital gains means that if the market prices will be really attracted then we will be selling these investments otherwise we want to earn the dividend on them so shares can be sold when the prices are attracted attractive or when the company needs the cash so there is a chance that you might be selling them but not more sure because most of the time you hold them for the dividend income so these types of securities are known as available for sale the second type of securities are known as trading securities. Trading securities are those securities uh, the purpose of investing in them is to actively buy or sell them 
with short term profits that's uh, we don't have an intention to get the dividend we don't want that so if the company is having an investment which is uh, nat by nature available for sale then in that case what we will be crediting that is different than what we will be crediting in trading securities so let's have a further detail about it under market method distinguishing between available for sale and tr uh, trading securities is crucial to treat the unrealized gain and loss uh, the book value for the investment was 50 million and the market value is 60 million you need to update your books to 60 million right because this is what market method said so I need to add 10 million more to make it equal to 60 million right so but uh, I'm increasing this not because I'm getting the money I'm increasing this because I am updating the book value up to the market value so I'm not gaining anything but this is an unrealized gain because I might get it if I will be selling the shares right so that's why we call it unrealized gain or loss so in case if your securities are available for so, uh, sale security so you will be debiting the investment account like over here with the increase of 10 million but you will be crediting other comprehensive income we have taken this uh, topic in the previous chapters that other comprehensive income is an equity account and it contains those gains and losses which does not affect your income statement so it will be affecting other comprehensive income account which is the part of the balance sheet so in this case income statement is not affected if your uh, shares are available for sale but if the shares nature is trading securities then the change in the market value is reported in the income statement because it has a large effect on the earnings so any change in the market value is shown in the income statement even if it is unrealized so if you see here investment will get debit with 10 million but I'm not crediting other comprehensive income I'm crediting unrealized gain or losses usually we have one account for this 10 million and this is an income statement account how do you calculate the fair value or the market value for uh, the securities so firstly let's take the definition and then we will be talking about fair value hierarchy under US gap it is the price fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset when you want to sell an asset you will be getting this value or you will be paying this uh, price to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction there is a proper order between the market participants at a measurement measurement date that on a particular date this is happening whereas under IFRS it is the amount for which an asset could be exchanged they did not limit it to sell they said exchanged it could be uh, for cash it could be for another asset or a liability settle this is something different in IFRS between knowledgeable and willing parties and the arms length transaction what is the main problem main problem is how to define this price this is the price this is the amount how you're going to define this uh, calculate this price so the price determination especially when the easily observable data is not available is the main problem so we have fair value hierarchy which has three different levels level one is where the active markets exist for the identical assets like shares bonds they have active markets so examples are investment in stocks and bonds so we will be taking their fair value from the market itself because the markets are established what if the markets are not established you cannot get it then you go to the level two in the level two where the assets are traded and prices are observable it means the assets are exchanged or they are sold out uh, you can sell them but the markets are not so active or you can say the markets are active but the assets are not identical they are different what could be the examples real estate assets every land is different than the other uh, every building has unique things than the others but yes they are saleable so in that case we check their available uh, market price and based on that we try to buy or sell them or we try to record their market value 
whereas the third category is uh, the level three when you don't have a market established you you don't have established market you don't have identical assets then what should you do the third level works that is level three in level three we do not use market model so at the level three fair value is not defined based on mark to market model uh, sorry mark to market this is because there is no market for these types of securities so what is the reference in that case we uh, calculate the fair value based on a model that is known as the valuation model we take the asset and we estimate how much benefits we could be getting from them in the future and we calculate their present value this is one example based on the model to define the fair value of the asset fair value of the level 3 is based not on the market price but rather a prediction of what the market price would be if market access so this is based on a model so there are three different levels to define the fair value based on the nature of the asset let's talk about the second method i talk i i i have discussed with you three different level of influence so the previous two methods which we did market method or the cost method they were for the passive investments for the significance influence investment we follow equity method significant influences when a company has 20 to 20, 50% investment in another company uh, even if the percentage is less than 20% sometimes we can follow the equity method when the company has a significant influence on on the other it could be happening when no other investor has greater than 20% share only your company has the biggest investment then yes do you do have a significant influence so we follow the equity method um, what are the features of equity method invest invest initially recorded as uh, the acquisition cost whatever you pay to purchase the shares your investment will be recorded on that price whenever the investee will give the dividend dividend will be treated as a recovery of investment it means investment will decrease okay not dividend income you will not record it as income therefore it reduces dividend reduces the investment account uh, your company or the investment company will report the income and loss equal to the percentage of the ownership so let's suppose company a has invested in company b so if company b has a net income at the year end and company a has 20 percent ownership so 20 percent of this net income will be recorded as income in company a book okay so this is how the equity method works so why do we follow the equity method why not uh, fair value uh, sorry market method or the cost method because of some reasons like company a has a significant influence on the decisions of company b so company a could force company b to uh, give huge amounts of dividends just to earn too much profits that's why equity method saves the investees or like company b from such losses let's have a look at it so the key points is dividend under the equity methods are treated as return or you can say recoveries of investment why do we do that this is done to avoid the potential management manipulation in the dividend policy for example if we don't follow the equity method then what will happen for example if the dividends were treated as income if you you would not be following the equity method you will be treating the dividends as income so then the investor can increase their profits by imposing higher dividend payouts on investee company a might be forcing company b to pay huge amounts of dividends and that will be an income for company b company a and its net income will increase and what about company b it will have less retained earnings for future perspective so they will be at loss means uh, they they are, they they will get some damages because of it because they couldn't save much for the future so that's why to avoid all these situations we follow equity method whatever dividends will be given by company b it will decrease the investment of company a so degree of influence will decrease so the equity method removes this potential of earning management by making recognition of income independent of the dividend policy they say dividend will not be treated as income 
so the dividend policy has no influence on the investors income company a income will not be affected because of dividends let's have this example microsoft purchases 30 percent interest in a supplier abc software paying 50 million in cash so when the microsoft make the investment investment equity investment gets debit and cash gets credit what uh, whatever amount they have paid at the end of the year abc software means this investee has reported 20 million in the net income and paid 10 million in the cash dividend now let's record firstly the income for microsoft so uh, what will happen um, equity investment will increase because the investee has reported an income how much income 20 million how much ownership is Microsoft having 30 percent so 20 30 percent of 20 million is 6 million so equity investment gets debit 6 million and this is an income for the Microsoft 6 million what about the dividends 10 million 10 million uh, is the full dividend uh, the investee has declared 30 percent belongs to microsoft but it is not an income it will decrease uh, the investment so equity investment gets credit which is 30 percent of this dividend that is 3 million and cash microsoft is receiving because it's a cash dividend so 3 million gets debit if we do not follow the equity method then what would be happening over here cash debit and dividend income gets credit which will increase the income of microsoft but we don't want any earning management because of this influence that's why equity investment decreases in equity method let's talk about uh, the consolidation which is in case when the company a controls the company b when they have huge ownership so ownership of 50 percent or over results in control over the investee in this case investee becomes the subsidiary and investor becomes the parent company us gap and ifr requires that the parent company or you can say investor is responsible to combine the financial statements of all majority owned companies with its own in the consolidated financial statement so let's suppose investor is a and investee is b so at the end of the year investor will means company a will be making a consolidated financial statement for a b together okay um control of investment can be exerted with ownership that is less than 50 percent we the company a could have control even if the ownership percentage is less than 50 percent when no other investor holds the huge amount so in that case again company a uh, is uh, holding the company b so this is when the investor with the majority ownership while all others are widely disposed shareholders all others are having very small amounts of percentages how does consolidation work so we should remember uh, th we should remember the three basic uh, concepts or you can say three basic fundamental rules for the consolidation process like uh, company a and company b when you will be consolidating the income so company a will have revenue company b will have revenue so in consolidated statement we will write together both of them right all the expenses together together everything assets together liabilities together but there are some things which we should remember number one intercompany transactions they should be taken care of now what does this mean um parent company sometimes lend to subsidiaries means maybe company a has given a loan to the company b so company a will be having notes receivable and company b would be having notes payable in the liabilities right or it could be an opposite scenario b has notes receivable and a has notes payable because they have uh, lended and borrowed from each other these intercompany transactions which includes loans receivables payables sales they must be eliminated we should remove them what's the reason look at this example this one when you will be preparing the consolidated balance sheet in the asset side you will be having notes receivable and on the liability side you will be having notes payable it means you have to receive this money from yourself because consolidated means all together 
that's not uh, you know um, this is debit and this is credit so we can cross them in the consolidated financial statement just to avoid the confusion and to complications and also it doesn't look good that I'm saying that I need to collect the money from myself consolidated means I'm all together right so that's why we uh, remove the intercompany transactions uh, here is an example parent company sales are 100 million subsidiary sales are 30 million if they did not sell to each other then in that case we will be doing 100 plus 30 that's all together 130 but they say 10 million of the parent sales were to subsidiary means parent has done out of 100 million 10 million to subsidiary so eliminate it 10 million we are not going to consider it so the sales together are 120 million moving on towards the second concept which says external minority shareholders it's not always true that parent holds 100% ownership in subsidiary like in our example we said above 50% we will be saying it's consolidation situation so there are many other investors there are minority shareholders let's suppose company A owns 70% of company B so 30% are minority shareholders right so parent often do not own 100% of the subsidiaries consolidation process must acknowledge ownership interest by the external minority shareholders they say you prepare income statement you prepare balance sheet don't forget to mention them that how much belongs to them right claims of minority shareholders are referred to as non-controlling interest this is the term which we use in consolidated income statement and balance sheet to show uh, the share of non-controlling shareholders um, recently classified as the shareholders equity means uh, it's the part of the shareholders equity to show the equity share of them also it is the part of income statement to show the income share of them example subsidiary reports net income of 10 million parent on 70 percent of the entity so 70 percent ownership is with parent remaining 30 percent is for minority subsidiary accounts are consolidated with the parent so when you do the consolidation at that time the parent net income becomes 50 million so this is the consolidated income parent will recognize full income in its income statement this 50 million we will report but it must also report that how much belongs to minorities out of this 50 million so consolidated net income is 50 million 30% ownership is with minorities so 30% of what not this one this is consolidated figure right talk, talk about this 10 million this is for subsidiary so 10 million income was for subsidiary 30% of it is 3 million so out of 50 million 3 million belongs to sub, uh, uh, minorities remaining 47 is for the parent company so make very sure when you are taking this percentage do not take from the consolidated amount no that includes for parent and subsidiary both only for subsidiary it's 10 million so 30 percent belongs to minority remaining 70 percent is for parent third concept which we should consider when we are talking about the consolidated statements that is goodwill one company acquires another company always gives rise to goodwill most of the time not 100 percent goodwill is not amortized like other um, intangible assets all the intangible assets they usually get amortization right but goodwill is not amortized it is only impaired when do uh, a company records a goodwill in its balance sheet when it purchase another company above its value so uh, microsoft acquires abc software for dollar 100 million for 100 percent ownership um so for example 100 million microsoft has paid okay now why did microsoft has paid this because microsoft is purchasing abc company abc company has assets and liabilities so microsoft is paying this 100 million for their net assets and liabilities right so 
it might be possible this uh, net assets and liabilities are 100 million and Microsoft is paying exact amount but most of the time net assets and liabilities are less so the extra amount which Microsoft is paying it could be for some intangible assets which were in process and now we should recognize them and if you cannot recognize any other intangible asset then the the difference which is 30 is for um, goodwill that Microsoft is paying more because the company ABC has some goodwill but we have this example look at this purchase price which is 100 million first be allocated to the tangible assets and liabilities at their fair value okay so 100 million was full uh, asset a full amount which Microsoft paid for example assets of ABC are 80 million liabilities of ABC are 25 million this is their fair values and when you net it off it becomes 55 million so out of 100 million 55 million is to get these assets and liabilities remaining how much extra Microsoft is paying that is 45 million check the stuff maybe there are some intangible assets like patents copyrights they are supposed to be recorded so when you identify them they are identifiable intangible assets let's suppose they are 31 million so out of 45 million 31 million was for them so still 14 million is extra why did Microsoft paid 14 million extra that was for goodwill so these are the three concepts which we should consider when we are calculating uh, the consolidated financial statements um, this topic is in much more detail going to be discussed in advanced accounting in which we will be talking about consolidated rules and regulations and soon I will be uploading their series as well this is it about uh, the investment chapter I hope all the concepts are clear to you but if you have any confusion feel free to write in the comment section inshallah I'll try my best to answer your concerns take care everyone